Number 12, my last one. This is a new ending. I worked on this about 10 hours in the last two weeks. I'm weird. Um, the Sisyphean task. Sounds pretty crazy, huh? How many of you know, have any idea what Sisyphean means? Some Greek scholars here. Well, well played. Good. Uh, I believe that track coaches, coaches in general, but track coaches in particular, has, have a Sisyphean task. We have to struggle more than people I know. Our, the track is, is a hard gig. These, for these people that are not Greek scholars, uh, Zeus dealt Sisyphus the eternal punishment of forever rolling a boulder up a hill in the depths of Hades. That's, that's kind of the way I see coaching track sometimes. It's, it's, it's not easy. It's a damn struggle. It's really hard. I think this might solve a lot of problems in the world if we start teaching kids that happiness requires struggle. I, I think we want happiness, right? And we would like it all the time. But it ain't gonna happen. And the happiest we'll ever be is when we struggle the most for it. I think that's one of the reasons why we coach is the struggle. Isn't that weird? Have you ever been this happy? This is my good friend, Jason Crow. Just won the state championship. His team beat O'Malley. Now some people, like when I was a young coach, I probably would have been jealous of him. All the talent he had this year. And I wouldn't have understood his 20 years of struggle of heartbreak, failure, of teams that could have done it and didn't do it. But I think we all should be that happy once in a while. But to do it, man, it ain't gonna be easy. And if it is, it's gonna screw up your life. There's nothing worse than a coach that wins championships in their first couple years. Now they're screwed. I mean, <laughs> the rest of your life is gonna be awful. <laughs> So this is one of my favorite stories. Alec sitting right here. Uh, Alec did not have an easy high school career. Uh, he averaged 25 a game uh, for his team as a junior and did not finish the season. Had to quit the team based on some stuff that will probably be my second book. Maybe if I ever have the guts to write it. Uh, his athletic career was, was never what it could have been. And so he comes out of the fire and enters the fire as a coach. Like, how do you figure that? How do you figure that? So he goes to Edwardsville, just a powerhouse track and field program run by a Harrisburg guy that I coach, Chad Licatos. And, uh, and twice they had a chance to be state champions. Probably should have been state champions. Kind of like if you're not state champions, you blew it, and they blew it. I got this picture of him. It was like this close. When they clinched it finally. And Alex said, I felt like Andy Dufresne, like I'd crawled through a river of shit and came out clean on the other side. Struggle. The only way we get happy is through struggle. He went through struggle. So I put my camera down and we hugged and we cried. I don't know why we cried. Alec went home, they did the fire truck parade shit, you know, through town and woo, state champs. The rest of my family, uh, Troy and Adrian and Quinn and me and Jill, we all went home and we were drinking some beer. We were all of age and we were drinking some beer. <laughs> and Adrian said, you know, I, I've never seen Alec cry before. But when dad hugged him, he cried. And then Troy, who's sitting right here, said something I'll never forget. I don't think there's anything in my job that will ever make me so happy, I'll cry. Now you might be wrong, I don't know. But I know in coaching, we have that opportunity to have, to be that damn happy. To be that damn happy. And we get to provide those opportunities to kids. But it doesn't end there. My son Quinn, he didn't have an easy time. He, I really believe that Quinn, could have been a superb 
high school quarterback. Two shoulder surgeries, serious shoulder surgeries. Uh, did not play any college athletics at all. Like Alec, he went from the fire into the fire. He went into coaching. I don't know. And he went, he's coaching Andrew High School. They hadn't won a playoff game in 10 years. They got beat in their opener 53 to 8. I called him, I said, if you, you know, like that night, I said, if you don't handle things well this weekend, you're going to go 0 9. That's how bad it looked. But somehow, they had a miraculous season. They go up to Huntley and upset Huntley. Like, who cares? You guys don't even know where Huntley is. But Quinn did. Upset him. That's his quarterback. He's quarterback's coach. And you can just tell how proud he is. And then uh, uh, my wife and I went down to congratulate him, and I really couldn't make eye contact with him. We definitely didn't hug him. No way. Because I've never seen him happier. Ever. On the way out, my wife said, are you crying? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about what we do that other people don't get to do. And it may not happen in 10 years or 20, but we have moments like this. And maybe nobody will ever know about your moment, but your player will. This is my dad, uh, 70 years ago. Uh, it's weird, he has Alzheimer's now, 87 years old. Alzheimer's, uh, he doesn't know, I mean, it's awful. But, but his memory of sports, untouched. This picture, it's at Kiel Auditorium. I was a sophomore, scored 16. I said, Dad, you don't know how to work the remote anymore. And you remember that? Like it's yesterday. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. And Dad had a hard time because I struggled. As an athlete, I could have been pretty good. I had some talent. I was a coach's kid too, that helps. Unfair advantages. But I had uh, three broken bones, seven dislocations, 16 ankle, bad ankle sprains, ankle surgery, shoulder surgery. And I went right into the fire. I went into coaching. I don't know why. I don't know why I did, but it hurt my dad watching it. And so, so I became a basketball coach and he was so proud. I was a head coach when I was 23, youngest coach in the state of Illinois at the age of 23. In the first five years, my teams went 29 and 92. Yeah, I had a ball, I mean, I was a head basketball coach. But man, I struggled, I struggled. And so the sixth year of being a head coach, my team started off pretty good, about time. And we were in the El Dorado Holiday Tournament and de mom and dad got to come see the game and they sat through an afternoon game that was one of those instant classics. Lead changes, 5,000, I was told 5,500, but I'm gonna say 5,000. In the stands, it was just a magical moment. And we won. And we're going to play for the championship, which we won later. But my dad went home and wrote a letter to me. And he never sent it. He said in the letter, I'm not good at expressing my feelings, and I'm even worse at writing. But I found the letter four weeks ago. 35-year-old letter in a box of like clippings. He kept it. And this is what he said. He said, it's difficult to watch the last two to three minutes today because of the tears that filled my eyes. Ooh. Can't read the rest. But you understand that what we're doing matters. We create memories that are unbelievable. I will never forget my great memories of sports or my shitty ones. Both. And my dad, no matter what he loses, late in life, he'll never forget that. I'm just glad I found the letter 
eventually. I don't know why you didn't send it. Thank you so much. Enjoyed it.